Okay. Welcome to our lecture number 12. And today we will have two main topics. We have the reproductive organs, like a male and female, and we will talk about the asexual and the sexual re reproduction. So what is sexual and sexual reproduction? So I'm going to explore a little bit with you guys. And, uh, um, and I want to just see where we are in order to know how deep I can go, okay? All right, so now, sexual and versus uh, uh, asexual. All right, so I have a wound on my skin. I have a healing process. The reproduction are going to be sexual or asexual uh, division? Asexual. Sexual? Asexual. Asexual, okay? So, asexual. So, basically, what is a, a sexual reproduction? Is going to be mitos, mitosis or meiosis? Mitosis. 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 Excellent. Mitosis. Mitosis. All right. So, all right. So, let's get the start. So, for this, I'm going to make a small summary here, and then we are going to go over the slides. Okay, there's a lot of um, names and uh, uh, definitions that we need to add to this lecture, but let's go a uh, little, little by little. So we have here the mitosis and we have the meiosis. I'm going to talk about this together. So mitosis, we are going to have a mother cell, the mother cell. The mother cell is going to be a cell who are going to be having two N chromosomes. Two N chromosomes. So two N chromosomes, let's start with what is N. N means 23 pairs, no, 23 chromosomes. When you have two N, that means 46 chromosomes. That is the same to say 2N chromosome, because N means 23 chromosomes. 2 times N means 46 chromosomes, means 2N to N. This is, this is going to be called a diploid cell. Diploid cell, or diploid, diploid cell. Diploid means die, di, die means two. Ploid, ploid means number of chromosomes. Number of chromosomes. Okay, so we have in these two situations, we have the mother cells and we have the, the mother cells in mitosis and meiosis. M meiosis is going to happen in the reproductive organs. So I'm going to talk about that in a few moments. Now, uh, these N chromosomes, N23 chromosomes, okay, are going to be called haploid, 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 haploid. Haploid means, uh, just remember, 23 is the half of 46, half. correct, right? Half, correct? Haploid, half, half, Haploid, a way to remember that, okay? All right, so this mother cell are going to be a di diploid cell or two end cell or 46 chromosomes, okay? And these are actually in both situations. So all the body are going to start, a uh, uh, all the body is going to have two end chrom chromosomes. So every single cell in your body have 46 chromosomes. Now, mitosis or mitosis, are going to have two daughter cells, two daughter cells, and these two daughter cells are going to have equal number of chromosomes, and that is the end. So two daughter cells, you have two, two daughter cells that are going to have each of them a diploid 46 chromosomes or two end chromosomes. Tell me, how many 
how many cells we have at the end of mitosis. Two, three, four, how many? Two. Two. Uh, you said two, or you said two? Two. Okay, two, okay? Why? Because I mentioned that because in the past I saw students doing, having a uh, confusion there. So this is the mother cell, two end cell, and look at it, what happened with this mother cell. The mother cell disappeared and is going to turn into two. There is no three cells at the end. It's only two cells, okay? And that is basically a clone, a clone, a clone, clones. So when is going, where is going to happen? You have a broken bone, mitosis. You have a skin uh, uh, injury, mitosis. You have liver, kidney, spleen, uh, any part of your body are going to have mitosis, okay? Meiosis are going to happen in the reproductive organs. All right, so here the first division, the meiosis is called sometimes the double mitosis. So we have again here two daughter cells, so two N cells, two N cells, two N. So they have exactly the same as the mitosis. But then meiosis is going to divide again. That's why it's called meiosis the uh, double mitosis, okay? Double mitosis, but the real name is meiosis, okay? So uh, after the first, first division, each of the daughters are going to divide into two cells again. But this time, these cells are not going to multiply the chromosomes. They are going to divide the chromosomes into N chromosomes. N, N, N. So we have here meiosis, two daughter cells. Uh, I mean, uh, meiosis are going to two daughter cells, and the two daughter cells are going to divide the DNA into N, N chromosomes. So that is meiosis. Here, in the first, I'm going to put it like this, just to make some uh, some equivalent, not equivalent, but some, uh, I mean, a comparison here, is that from 2N to 2N here, this is going to happen, the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And here, in this second meiosis, me, uh, second meiosis or mitosis, uh, the second part of the meiosis is called, not the second mitosis. Second part of the meiosis, are going to divide in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and they are going to basically skip the the duplication of the duplication of the uh, duplication of the of the chrome. It's not going to have a duplication in the second part of the meiosis. They are going to just divide. This is going to be actually in the case of the ovary, for example we have ovules. This is are the ovules. When these, uh, res res these cells are going to start to having a tail here, that is what is going to be formed, the spermatozoids. Spermatozoids. Okay, so that is about meiosis and mitosis. So now, we have uh, the gametes. The gametes, gametes, what is a gamete? So please write down this. A gamete is going to be an spermatozoid or oh, sperm. It's the same, sperm. A sperm is basically a, a, the group of spermatozoids, but you can call the sperm the spermatozoid as well. Then we have the ovule. The ovule. So that is a gamete. Gamete is an spermatozoid or and the ovum. So a gamete is the general name for these two structures. Okay? All right, so I want just to make an emphasis on something. We have, for example, in a, spermat in a spermatozoid, there is different names that you will find in your book or in the book, in your, in your PowerPoint. For example, they call a, sp a spermatid. Oh, it's called primary, primary spermatic. They can be called secondary spermatic or tertiary spermatic. 
So don't for, don't don't get don't get confused on that. When you say spermatid, primary, secondary cell, just think about spermatosome. Period. Spermatosome. We are going to call it like that. Because we don't need to know what is happening in each stage. Now, in ovum, in the ovum are going to have the oocyte. Oocyte. The oocyte are going to be primary, secondary, tertiary. And I don't want to use this um, this this word. If you if you, if I put it, that means ovum. Ovum. Okay. All this o o means uh, uh, oocyte or say ovum. Okay. Oocyte means ovum. If you see that, just translate it into ovum. Spermati, primary, secondary, tertiary. Just transmit it in, uh, translate it into uh, spermatosome. Okay. All right. We okay with that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Excellent. yes. Excellent. Then we have another term that you need to remember before we go forward. It's called the gonad. 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 What is a gonad? Gonad is the reproductive organ itself. Who is gonad? The testicle and the ovary. So who is, what is the testicles a gonad? What is an ovary? A gonad. Give me one example of gonad, testicle or ovary. Okay? All right. You okay with that? All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, the production, and this is what we are going to focus here, is about the meiosis. Okay? Mitosis, yeah, you already know, we already give examples that these are happening in the rest of the body except except in the reproductive organs in the reproductive organs what we are going to have is the meiosis but that is related to what that is related to the gametes and how we are going to uh, include that in our our information is this the production of of ovules and the production of spermatozoids are going to follow meiosis. This process are going to be called the gametogenesis. Gametogenesis. What is the gametogenesis? Gametogenesis, gameto means the sex cell. Sex cell. That could be the spermatozoid or the ovary. Correct? Sex cell. This gametogenesis. Genesis means origin. So it's going to be the formation of these uh, uh, cells. Gametogenesis are going to be, be divided into the spermatogenesis, spermatogenesis, and the oogenesis. So gametogenesis is the big umbrella. Gameto means sex cells. And this gametogenesis are going to divide into spermatogenesis and oogenesis. So if this is oogenesis, the mother cells are going to two daughter cells, then they're going to another daughter cells, and it's going to end from two N chromosomes to four cells who contain each of them N, N chromosomes. Okay, in mitosis, we have from one are going to lead into two daughter cells with equal, with two N chromosomes. And the meiosis, instead of have two, you have four at the end. And, but each of them, they have N, 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 N chromosomes. Okay, we okay with that? Now, yeah. if you have a tail here, that is actually the spermatosome. All right, so we okay with that. All right, so let's let's read. Uh, all right, so reproduction that does not involve meiosis. And why I read? Because there are some words that you need to remember. Involve meiosis. Meiosis, what is meiosis? Is the sexual reproduction. Ploidy, ploidy, ploidy. This is a word that we are going to use now, uh, today. Ploidy means number of chromosomes. Ploidy, what is the ploidy of these cells? is actually the number of chromosomes. Okay, and reduction of fertilization. What is fertilization? 
Fertilization is the fusion of gametes. What means the fusion of gametes? Fusion of gametes means the encounter of the ovum and the spermatozoid. That is called the fertilization. Fertilization. Another names that you need to remember about fertilization. Fertilization is exactly the same to say fecundation. Is exactly the same to say conception. Conception. So that's the old terms that we using in different way. Okay, in different. It's the same meaning, but we use in different situations. Fertilization, we're talking about when somebody cannot get pregnant. Fecundation, when we talk about the process of the fusion, exactly talking about that. And conception is basically more general. It's like uh, almost colloquial. But fertilization, fecundation, and conception means exactly the same. In medicine, we use mostly fertilization and fecundation. Conception is used for a little bit kind of more colloquial uh, vocabulary or term. Okay, all right. So, and that is happening in the in the uh, happening with the uh, asexual reproduction. Look at this. All right. So, uh, probably getting you confused here. Uh, reproduction does that not include meiosis. Is not including this meiosis ploidy or reduction of fertilization. So all what I was explaining is the sexual reproduction. So if that is not happening, any of these, that means asex asexual reproduction means the mitosis, mitosis. In primitive uh, and most unicellular organisms involve only mitosis, produce exact copy of self, a clone. Daughter cells are genetically identical, and uh, done by individual cells within in the human body. So all the cells in the body are going to produce a sexual reproduction. And the only portion that we have sexual reproduction are going to be testicles and ovaries. All right, so sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction involving the fusion of female, uh, female gamete, the ovum. Gamete is an ovum. And gamete can be a spermatozoan. So I told you already, see, if there's something weirdo, just translate it into a spermatozoid. This is the same thing, a spermatozoan. So male gamete and female gamete. So ovum and spermatozoid get together. So that is sexual reproduction, which forms a zygote. What is a zygote? A zygote is, here we have a spermatozoid with N chromosomes plus an ovum, N chromosomes, and produce a cell called the zygote, zygote. This zygote, N plus N to N. So the zygote is, is what we call O, O, um, um, uh, fertilized egg, the fertilized egg. Zygote or fertilized egg. So that is exactly after the fusion of the ovum and the spermatozoid occurs in more advanced uh, organisms involve exchange of genetic material that is important because the ovum is coming from the mother with a genetic information of the mother your color of your hair your skin your eyes your nose right everything is going to be uh, determined by the x chromosome of the ovum and the father is coming with his own information as well with his own characteristics. So that's why they are going to exchange. They're coming together and they are going to be, the baby is going to look like you or like your father, the father, or actually any, any of the parents, right? So it's basically the, uh, the melt between father and mother, and that is the characteristic of the newborn. All right, so two genetical different organisms donate some chromosomes each, yes. So this combination are going to result in a very unique individual. Similar, but not exactly the same. And it's going to be totally, uh, uh, totally uh, um, um, different and unique. Offspring is a combination of two genes from two different organisms. 
the offspring is, is unique, genetically different from either from, from either parent. So yes, they have a piece of the father and the mother, is similar, but at the same time, the whole thing is going to be different from the father because they have components of the mother as well. All right. So we have human uh, DNA. We have total 46 chromosomes diploid. We already have two N chromosomes or 46 chromosomes. Uh, haploid cells are going to be having half of the number of chromosomes. Answer please this. Cells that have only one set of chromosomes instead of two are called what? Everybody? Dead. Diploid. Wait, no. Cells haploid? that have only one set. The haploid. haploid. The haploid, right? Haploid. Haploid is, is going to consider they have one set. Two sets is the diploid. You okay with that? Yes. yes. Which, yes. Of, which of the following is not to, uh, true about sex cells? Sex cells are also called gametes, yes or no? Yes. True. Everybody, please. Yes. Sex cells yes. can yes. be produced only by gonads? Yes. 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 You don't yes. Spermatozoids from your nose, or from your ear. You don't produce ovules in different parts. It's only in the, it's going to be located in the ovary. Female sex, female, female sex cells are called all sides, true or false? True. 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 That's true. what I was telling you at the beginning. If you see all sides, don't get COVID, yeah, put it translated in your mind as ovul, period. Sex cells are the diploid cells, yes or no? No. No, right? Male sex cells are called spermatozoa. Yes. True. Yes. yes. Very good. All right, so here we have the gametogenesis that is all news, right? You already know what is gametogenesis. Is uh, they're going to, from mother cell that is diploid, are going to get into four, but haploid, each of those cells. Okay? All right. Uh. All, right so, all right, so talking about homologous and uh, heterologous chromosomes. That is the moment I want you really to pay attention because if there is some gap uh, in this, you will not able to understand anything that is coming later. So you already have a class about this in the past. So that is a base for what we are going to talk today. I was trying to do something to help on that yesterday or on, no, on Wednesday. And we will see how is that work. All right. So you need to remember what is locus, what is allele, genotype, phenotype, and trait. Look like it's boring and a lot of names, but it's very interesting. And besides that, you must know that in order to be able to answer questions that are uh, cross, I mean, it's a little bit of math on here. So that's what is coming in next class. For that, I'm going to go to this uh, map. All right. So for this, for this, I want you to uh, remember that we have one, two, three, 22, and this is 23 pairs. So all this is the map, the chromosomal, chromosome map. This chromosome map is going to be, one side is going to be from the father or mother, and the other side from the father or mother. So let's start here, the mother, the father, it could be either way. Mother, father, father, mother, mother, father, etc. So, but you see, but those chromosomes doesn't look that as chromosomes because the girls should be having some kind of centromere here. No, 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 no. The parent, look, this is very confusing. I want to make it easy. Look at that. This, this is one chromosome, this. This is one chromosome. I didn't say the half of a chromosome is just totally one chromosome. Why? Because the chromosome is going to be here, the centromere, and the chromosome branches or arms are going to be like this. One, and then and two here, but they're kind of very close to each other. So that's why it looks like it's a little bit weird. And that is another. So if you separate these branches, you will have this. Okay, we gave you that? Yes. Okay. Yes. So 
this is one chromosome, all this is one chromosome, and this is another chromosome. This is from the father or mother or mother father. Okay? Mother, father, mother, father, mother, father, mother, father, mother, father, etc. All right. So that is a one. Number two, what I want you to go here is to get to the names. The names are going to be from here to here, from here to 22. 22 is going to be called what? They are going to be called aurosomal, aurosomal chromosomes, okay? And this one, only these two, a pair, one pair, are going to be the sexual chromosomes. Why do we need to know that? Because there are some pathologies that are exclusively for the autosomal chromosomes, and another that are exclusively from pathologies of sexual chromosomes. Autosomal chromosomes, you will talk about Patau syndrome, uh, Edward syndrome, uh, 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 Le Cri du Cat, and the most common, the Down syndrome. Down syndrome. We have other uh, chromosomal, chromosomal normalities, sexual chromosomes, will be, for example, the Turner syndrome, that is the lack of one of the sexual chromosomes, and we are going to talk about the color blindness. Do, do you know somebody with color blindness? Do you know somebody with hemophilia? So those pathologies are related to abnormalities of the sexual chromosomes. So that's why you need to remember at this moment what is the division of the chromosomes. Autosomal from pair, pair, pair number one to pair number 22. So pair 21 to pair 22, we have 44 chromosomes. Plus one pair, one, sec, one sexual pair are going to be XY or XX. Those are the gender of the of the individual. You hear me that? Yes. Yes. There is some crackers or something. I don't know what it is. Okay. Next. So here we are going to classify the chromosomes, and you don't need to know that, it's just for your information, that this chromosome is called chromosome one, and this is chromosome one again. Chromosome, remember, chromosome, chromosome, it says chromosome, chromosome, right? So father and mother. So these chromosomes are going to be one. Why we know is one? Because just to make it simple here, the chromosome, there's chromosomes that are going to have, the branches are very high. And they actually, you are going to a group with another chromosome, they have the same characteristic. Other chromosomes are going to be huge on, the, on one side and small in the other side, like that. And that you are going to pair with another chromosome that is found in the other parent. And they are going to pair. So this pairing are going to be given chromosome one, two, three, four, five, etc. I've been doing that when I was doing, because uh, I'm biologist too, but I don't put that in my whatever, but for, I was bi biologist for, well, anyhow, whatever. So, and, uh, and they was teaching us how to uh, ungroup these, these chromosomes. We have the cells, we culture the cells, the cells are going to reproduce, and when they reproduce, they have this, uh, uh, chromosome. In the microscope, we take a picture and then we make an augmentation. And then we, in a piece of paper, we cut it like this size. And then one by one, and we regroup and we say, we call, we call the chromosome mapping. This chromosome mapping is important to determine if you have some pathologies. Pathologies, for example, Down syndrome or Edward syndrome. We will see that. All right, so now, these are going to a group. So if the chromosome one of the mother and the chromosome one of the father coming together, chromosome two of the mother and chromosome of the father, you put it together, you put it together. Because they are actually like, in reality, this, is, this doesn't appear like this. This appear like you have in the microscope, you see a lot of small, small strands all over. And that, that when you take a picture and you make augmentation, you cut it and put it one to another. 
So that is old fashioned, uh, but definitely uh, the only thing I want you to get here is that this chromosome mapping is important because we are going to differentiate in two things. The heterozygous, heter heterologous and homologous chromosomes. All right, so let's start. Homologous chromosome, homologous, what means homologous? Homologous means the same, or no? Right? Yes. Okay, homologous means the same. So, what we are doing is to re-group or make groups of 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 the same uh, same number of the uh, I would say the same chromosome from the father and from the mother. So this, for example, chromosome one, we put it together with chromosome one of the mother. So chromosome two of the mother compared with chromosome two of the mother. So we are comparing the homologous chromosomes, homologous chromosomes. So these chromosomes are homologous because this is chromosome one from the father, chromosome one from the mother. Chromosome, let's make it four from the father, chromosome four from the mother. And that is because they have the same number, these two chromosomes are going to be homologous, homologous. When you compare, if you compare, for example, one chromosome three with chromosome 18, these, that's it, they're, they're not comparable. So those are like heterologous chromosomes. Heterologous chromosomes. That is the beginning of all many situations that we are going to talk about, traits and genotype and phenotype. So let's make it simple, step by step. So, so far, is that clear or no, please? Yes, yes, it's clear. Clear. Clear? Okay. Yes. Okay. So heterologous means uh, not compatible? No, 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 no. Not compatible? No, no, no. It's not. I'm going to go to that. Okay, so let's go here. All right. Homologous chromosomes are two chromosomes, one of paternal origin, the other from maternal origin, that are identical in appearance and pair during meiosis. Those are equivalent chromosomes. Heterologous chromosomes are those who do not belong to the same pair. When you compare chromosome one to chromosome 20, those are not the same chromosome. And how we know they are not the same chromosome? For example, here in this, in this graphic, just to answer your question, is that here we have in chromosome, let's make it eight. You have the color of your hair, your color of your hair, right? So that is from the father. And the color of the hair of the mother is here. So that is the mother. So these chromosome eight are going to be homologous. And in addition to that, because they carry the same, kind of, same uh, characteristics, not necessarily black and black hair. So just carry the color of the hair. You can have green, no, green, red, uh, whatever, black, uh, blonde. But the gene for that chromosome are going to be located here. By the way, and that, that's what is taking, took me in the morning more time to explain. Oh. Tell, me, tell me one thing, what is a gene? In your own words. It's something you inherit from your parents. Okay, another idea? Yes, yeah, hereditary. What is a gene? Uh, talking about this. Huh? It's something you get from a, like your parents. It goes from your parents to offspring. See, that is a, okay. All right, so I need to your DNA. A makeup of DNA. Yeah, DNA. Keep going. Part of the, it is part of chromosome. Okay, so I can see that we are a little bit spreading out. Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, which could help me more? Yes, the one. This one. No, no. Uh, this one. All right, so please pay attention because that is what is taking me time to explain. I want to really be clear. But it's okay. Okay, so this is the DNA. Look at this. This is the DNA, as you see here. DNA is like a, a spiral of stairs. You see my, my PowerPoint with the spiral of stairs? Do you, do you see that or no? Yes. 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 Yeah, okay, so the steps, this is the step, a step where you put your foot here. You put your, your foot here, your foot to go up the stairs. So this is called the called bases, the bases, or called nucleotides. Nucleotides. So these pieces, these steps are going to be the A, T, and T, and the C, G. Remember A, T, and T. Just to remember, A, T, and T. A, T is associated. Uh, C, G is because C and C and G are very similar. So. C and G always together. A and T always together. Okay? That is in the DNA. RNA is different. All right. So here we have the steps. And you imagine, if you take, listen to this, please. If you take one DNA from one cell and you stretch it out only from one cell of your body, the, the line of the DNA is going to measure six feet long six feet long, only in one cell, the DNA of one cell. And we have 100 trillion, trillion cells. Imagine that. Now, if you have the steps, the bases, that actually as human size, as a normal stair, you find in any houses, in any building. So if that makes the equivalence, the DNA, is, the DNA uh, equivalence will be like you have a building of 1,000 story building, 1,000 story building, 1,000. So that is the size. If the base will be basically as the steps of the, of the regular steps that you see anywhere, your DNA is going to measure uh, the, the height of a building of 1,000 story building, okay? All right, so now, this is going to be, for example, this, uh, what is a gene? A gene are going to be pieces of the DNA. So please, gene are pieces of the DNA. So for example, here, this area, all this is going to be a gene. On another situation, all this will be a gene. It depends. How many genes we have? Write down because it's coming from the exam. We have 24,000 genes. And each gene is going to comprise groups of nucleotides, nucleotides or bases. For example, if you are in a building, you are in a building, let's make it a building, 1,000 story building, it doesn't exist, but you have 1,000 building story. So from floor number one to floor, whatever you want, 10, all these elements you have the bases, the phosphate, the sugars, all together in between one to ten story of uh, uh, floor, that is considered a gene. Or you can say from eleven to what number you want, hundred twenty. All right, so let's make it to hundred twenty story building. All the steps that are from eleven to hundred twenty story a building, that is going to be a gene again. So a gene is going to be a piece, a part, a compartment, uh, not compartment, but a, a division of the DNA. How many genes we have? We have 24,000 genes. What is the gene doing? What is the gene doing? Gene is going to give you the recipe for a protein. That is what is doing a, a gene. A gene basically is the recipe for a protein, enzymes, hormones, what else? Proteins, uh, anything that we was talking in the past, protons, receptors, I mean, uh, receptors, 
uh, transporters. So all hemo hemoglobin, so all these are proteins. And where are the recipe? Are from the DNA, from the gene, from each gene. Each gene is like a recipe for a, 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 a recipe for something, for a food. You get me that? Yes. Yes. So what is a gene? Yes. Imagine put in your head, put in your mind, 1,000 story building. All right, let's go walking, go stair from 1 to 15. All right, so all that floor from 1 to 15 is a gene. Okay. So let's go, keep climbing. Let's go to 15 to what number you want. 25, yeah, small one. So that is going to, from 15 to 25, that is considered to a gene. 26 to 300, right? So that whole group is going to be gene. So it depends. Depends what is actually located. Uh, now, each gene is going to have a protein and each gene are going to give you the characteristics, for example, the gene for your color of your hair, the gene for the color of your eyes, the gene for the color of your skin, the gene for the, for the height, for your height. There's the, uh, so there is, there is different genes. All genes are going to give you that characteristic. So some genes of the father, for example, the color of the, of the eyes of my father is green eyes. And my mother is brown eyes. So I have brown eyes because they combine. And brown is more dominant than the, the green eyes. But what happened is that these chromosomes that are coming from the father and my mother, let's put it this way, the color of the eye are going to be chromosome 12. Let's make it 12. So the other chromosome that the mother is coming, they need to be chromosome 12 as well in order to combine the green and the, and the brown from the father and mother. So they are combining and these chromosomes are homologous chromosomes because you're not comparing another chromosome that they have, for example, the, the color, or, I mean, the color of, of uh, how, how tall you are going to be, the height. The height will be Let's put it chromosome 23, 20, yeah, 22, 22. You don't compare chromosome 12 of the color of the eye with the chromosome 22 of the height. It's not going to result anything. They need just to exchange and compare with chromosomes who contain same gene, not exactly the color of your eyes, but have color, not, not exactly the green, or the blue eyes or whatever, just color of the eyes, color of the eyes. So for example, chromosome, another time, like I'm getting crazy. The chromosome three have color of eyes. I'm not saying which color. I don't say which color, that's, we don't care about the color at this moment. So chromosome three, color of the eyes. Chromosome three is the chromosome from the father. So this chromosome three with the color of the eyes of the father, I need to be compared with chromosome three of the color of the eyes of the mother. They can have green, green, blue, blue, or, or different color, doesn't care, I don't care. But they have the, actually, the proper, the characteristics of the color of the eye. So color of the eye and color of the eye, they combine and they give the result. So I have a question. How is it? Sorry, I have a question. So how is it dominant? How do they pick? Like, how do you? How do they decide if one has green eyes, one have brown? How do you pick? Okay, so uh, uh, that is next next class. But oh, I'm going to tell you. No, no, I'm going to tell you now. I want you to do this. All right. So uh, I want you to do this. Think about it. So in a paper, put a, a col uh, paint green. Paint green. If you paint green in a paper, what you call what color you see? Green. Correct? Now on the top, paint brown. Brown. Brown, brown. So what color you see there? Brown, correct? Right? But the green is, is there or not? Is still the green inside? Yes. 
That is exactly what happened with brown and green eyes. The dominant will be the brown eyes because it's darker. So it's going to just basically uh, hide or hide the, 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 the green, okay? But not always, right? Mm, what do you mean always? Not always, like, I mean, my mom has green eyes, I'm sorry, brown eyes. My father has uh, green eyes and then the child comes out with green eyes. Okay, then... so that depends, depends. For example, if I have, I have myself, I have green eyes and brown eyes. So if I have a kid with somebody who has green, green eyes, I have 50% that will have green eyes. 50% chance. Because I have the dominant and the recessive. So I have right now the green eyes and the brown eyes. But what I'm showing is the brown eyes. Okay. If the chromosome, the homologous chromosomes are going to cross, are going to be, uh, uh, I mean, if there's brown with green, it's going to turn green, uh, brown. But if I the chromosome decide to mix green and green, that is going to be good. Okay. Uh, Kat, I, I get confused, right? You get confused? Everybody get confused? No? Um, okay, I, 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 I see. I can't remember. All right, so let's keep moving. All right, so for that, you need to know, we need to know what is a gene, what is the DNA. And I, I kind of, uh, this DNA is going to be in this shape when it's not having cell division. There is no cell division yet. But when they go into cell division, this DNA is going to be cut in pieces. How many? 46 pieces. When they are going to have a, a cell division, cell division, this DNA are going to become into 46 chromosomes. Now, if you glue together all these chromosomes, are going to give you the same amount of, of uh, elements that we have in this type of DNA. The DNA here is going to be the cell when the cell is not dividing, it's not multiplying. When the cell decide to multiply or divide, they're going to this DNA cutting pieces and call the chromosomes, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. All right. So, tell me one thing. For example, uh, our um, Nikki. Nikki, you are super favorite. Okay, your favorite today. Okay. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, you don't want to be favorite today. You want favorite? Excellent. Then you. No. Yes, you said yes. All right. All right, Miss Nikki. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in your own words, what is a gene? Um, a gene is like the sweet, the sequence of nucleotides that are pieces of DNA. Yeah, pieces of DNA. Very good. Julia, how many genes we have? You said 24,000 or something? 24,000 yeah. genes, 24,000 genes, okay? All right, all right, so now, just remember the chromosomes, the chromo uh, for, uh, I, will, I will try one more time because I'm not satisfied. Okay. So we are going to, uh, when you are going to, when you, you marry and you have husband and wife, well, husband and wife are going to get together and they have babies. And the babies, they have sim similarities from the father and or from the mother, right? Correct? Perfect. And why is that? Because chromosomes that carry the same characteristic, I'm not saying exactly the same color of the eyes, or color of the, of, the, of the hair. No, just characteristic of the hair. 
Okay, characteristics of the hair. The characteristics of the hair are going to be, for example, in chromosome two. So just remember the first line, let's assume that is the father. The second line here, the second, second chromosome is the mother. So they are going to just share, exchange information from the father and the mother. And that happened when the baby is, when the baby, we have the fertilization. That is where the moment the baby start to uh, uh, determine what are the really characteristics that is going to have when it's going to grow. So chromosome two have the uh, character, uh, the uh, hair, hair department, let's put it, hair department. This is the father and the mother hair department. So the hair departments between chromo oh, homologous chromosomes are going to be able to uh, exchange information. And that is at the end giving you the color of your of your eyes or your co or color of your hair. Okay? So only the homologous chromosomes are able to exchange information. You cannot change information from heterologous chromosomes. You cannot, for example, here we have uh, the height, height. And here we have the uh, height, here's the height in this chromosome. And this is going to be, for example, I don't know, IQ, IQ, right? So you cannot compare this because this chromosome three and this chromosome 11 are heterologous. They don't have the same departments. They don't have, they cannot share, they cannot in, uh, exchange uh, information from one chromosome to another. So the only way to exchange and to transfer information from one to another chromosome is through homologous chromosomes. Is better now? We okay with that or no? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Okay. So we have here the gamut. The gamut are going to be the spermatozoid, spermatozoid or the ovum, period. Fertilization. Fertilization is the same to say fecundation or conception. Other name, amphimixis. I'm not going to just bomb with more, more terms. Fertilization, fecundation, conception. Okay? We already explained that. What is fertilization? Fertilization F is the fusion. Is the fusion of two gametes, spermatozoid plus ovum. Remember, fertilization, fe, 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 fecundation, fecundation, fertilization, fecundation, fertilization, right? And then we have what is fertilization? Is the fusion is the union, is the encounter between the spermatozoid and the ovum. They, when they get together, we have here the ovum, and here we have the spermatozoid they're going to come together and form one cell that is called the zygote. Zygote or the fertilized egg. Fertilized, fertilized egg or just egg. Egg, okay? So those are the names. So what is, what, is, uh, what is going to be formed after the fusion of the gamete is going to be the zygote, the zygote through a process called the fertilization, fecundation or conception. You okay with that? Yes. 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 All right, so let's talk about embryo and fetus. All right, so we have, we are going to talk about first trimester, second, no, this is not the time, okay? So I'm going to talk about just from the point of view of the embryo. The embryo are embryo, we have embryo, embryo is going to go from day zero of pregnancy up to eight weeks of gestation. Eight weeks, eight weeks. And from eight weeks and beyond, 39 to 42 weeks, that is the total pregnancy, is going to be called fetus. It's going to be called fetus. Fetus, okay with that? Okay. What is the difference between, so it's about two months. Two months. Two months is a, what is an embryo? Embryo at the beginning doesn't exist anything. There is no systems. 
There is no nervous system, cardiovascular, no, nothing. So the embryo, embryo, it's called the embryogenesis, embryogenesis, that is up to eight weeks, is going to occur what we call the development. Development, development. What is a development? Development is the formation for the first time of the anatomy and the physiology. So before this, you didn't have anything, right? So the kidney, your spleen, your brain, your eyes, your, your everything is going to be start forming the mass of the bones and that is formation of the anatomy and the physiology. That is the development, development. And we can call this embryogenesis. Embryo means is the form, embryogenesis, formation of the embryo. So that means the development of the embryo. It means the formation for the first time of the anatomy and the physiology. How long is going to last? For two months, actually eight weeks, eight weeks. So that's why uh, pregnancy are going to be uh, pregnancy are going to be very important to take care of your pregnancy during the first eight weeks because mostly of this is you are more se sensible to suffer abnormalities abnormalities so be careful with that always plan your pregnancy plan pregnancy in the best now about eight eight weeks and beyond more than eight weeks is fetus. Here we are going to have another term that is called the growth, growth, growth. So we have development and growth. Development is the formation of the anatomy physiology. After eight weeks, the, all the systems are already formed and what they are going to do is grow. What is growth? And increase in size. You okay with that? Yes. 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 All right, so so be careful, please. Okay, be careful with with uh, uh, with the first trimester pregnancy. That is up to twelve weeks. That is including mostly of the embryogenesis. Embryo, embryo, embryo is eight weeks. You already form all the systems, and physiology need to get mature, but mostly the physiology is already established. And after eight weeks, you're going to call this a fetus, fetus until the end. Embryo. Embryo, the human product of conception up to approximately approximately the, the end of the second month of pregnancy. First eight weeks. Embryo, organogenesis, development, development. So what is organogenesis? Development of the of the product, of the embryo. Organogenesis. Orga you want to go different way. What is organogenesis? is the formation of the organs, internal of the organs, anatomy and physiology. So what does that mean? That is that means the development of the embryo. Development of the embryo, what is that? What is development of the embryo? Organogenesis. What is organogenesis? The formation of the anatomy and physiology. So it's like a cycle. Everything actually similar. Embryo, up to eight weeks. Fetus, all the systems are being formed already. And what they need to do is just increase in size. That is after eight weeks of gestation. Gender. Gender. Do you see these stories that you go to ultrasound? I'm, you know, I'm sonographer as well. That uh, you have this. Uh, say, oh, what's a? It's a girl. It's a girl. And after you come the second, the second scanning, they said, oh, it's a male. Sorry, it's a male. So what happened? The father is coming, oh, I'm happy. No. Do you think it was changing your sex or gender in the middle? Yes or no? Do you think it's changing the sex? No. No. No, right. No, right. Because the sex is going to be established for the moment of the fertilization. There is no magic scene, oh, I want boy or girl, whatever, right? And by magic disappear or appear or something, right? No. It's because Actually, the gender is being established from the moment of the fertilization. So listen to this, please. The ovum is having a chromosome, a sexual chromosome X. And to be a female, you need to have X and X, two X, correct? Yes or no? 
Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, yes. the male, to be male, you need to have X and Y. X and Y. Yes or no? Right? All right. So, yes. All right. So, who, where is coming the, 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 if you have an ovum X, where is coming the Y? From the spermatozoid. You got it? But in effect, in a girl, where is coming from? Now the X. Ovum. Ovum. The ovum is having an egg. You need two X's. Okay. The ovum is always X. The spermatozoid is going to be Y. And when that happens, they're going to give you a zygote that is XY. That is a male, correct? Yes. yes. So yes. here we have an ovum here, X, and we have a spermatozoid. And the spermatozoid, in this case, they have X. So is the spermatozoid, the spermatozoid they have or, or Y or X. And how many spermatozoids are you going to have? You're going to have 50% of the spermatozoids are going to have the sexual chromosome Y. And 50% of all the, the rest of the spermatozoids are going to have the sexual chromosome X. So who is the one who determines the gender? Male. We are the ones who determine the gender. So 50%. So I, I uh, Teresa, uh, Kat, so I want you to go uh, and break or whatever as a homework, all of you, to check the number of female and male in the United States. We have 350 million about uh, people in the United States. Half and a half are going to be female and male. Very close to one half, 50-50. And you check other countries in the, around the world. You need to be careful if there is a war or there is a disease or something. They can change the numbers a little bit. But normally, humans, we have 50% of the population are female and 50% are male. Why? Because half of the spermatozoids are going to, half of the spermatozoids are going to be X and the other half Y. Female, the ovum is always X. Is that clear or not? Yes. 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 Okay. Clear. Okay. Okay. All right, so for this, I need to go over this point. There is some more terminology here. We have the word euploidy. Euploidy, ploidy, ploidy means number of chromosomes. Eu means uh, true. So that is a normal number of chromosomes. The other term is, this is normal. What will be the other name for abnormal? Abnormal are going to be called the aneuploidy. Aneuploidy. So abnormal. So you have less or more than 46. Euploidy, you have 46 chromosomes. Aneuploidy, you have 47, 48, 50. You have 45, 44, 40, but no, 30, 46. That is an employee. An employee are going to be divided in trisomy, 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 and the other one is the monosomy. Monosomy. All right, so which is, what is the tris, uh, trisomy? Trisomy is a, what is means three mono means one trisomy is happening this is happening with this 
if you have here at the at the moment they are going to uh, have the spermatozoid plus the ovum together you're going to have two n chromosome this this n this is zygote they are going to enter into mitosis up to here is going to end the meiosis but when is the zygote the one that is happening later on the division through mitosis this mitosis they are going to be in the metaphase in the metaphase in the metaphase of the mitosis you have chromosome 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 so 46 and 46 chromosomes then the centriole is coming and pull the chromosomes right when they pull the chromosomes instead to have equal number in each side what happened is oh my god ah, going to kill me all right so let's do it again so they're going to pull them to the poles to pull this way and to pull this way in order to separate the the cells but what happened <laughs> all right so uh, i cannot find with this pen tablet sorry all right so i'm going to probably send a picture here just a minute No, no, I'm not going to use my time here. This, I will try to do it one more time, bigger. All right. So <laughs> let's make it bigger. All right. So what happened in Down syndrome? Down syndrome. You know Down syndrome, right? Down syndrome is T21. T means trisomy. 21. 21 doesn't mean what? Is the chromosome 21. Chromosome 10, 21. So what happened here is this. So you have a cell here, a cell here, and the cell are going to have these chromosomes. During the metaphase, they are going to do this. And here we have the centrioles that are going to lace the cows, right? Lace the chromosomes. Lace the chromosomes. Lace the centrioles. Centrioles are going to lace the chromosomes. And what happened? Then they are going to pull down, pull down and separate them. So what happened in this actually separation? In this separation, in this separation, oh, yes. Please. In this separation, in this separation, so when they are going to separate, going this way, one of the sides are going to get the other chromosome on the other side. So instead to have equal number, this chromosome go up. This is empty. And that is going to have an additional chromosome. Additional chromosome. Additional chromosome. So in chromosome, how many pairs of chromosome we have? We have 23 pairs. One pair for uh, one pair, one pair for chromosome one. So one and one. One pair for chromosome two, two and two, right? But here in this Down syndrome, because of this no disjunction, I'm not going to go on that, no disjunction, they are going to, when they separate, they are going to pull the chromosome that is belong to somebody else. So at the end, what you have, 
is an extra chromosome 21. And that is what is happening in the Down syndrome. So you have basically problems of the division of the cells. That is where mostly of the problems are occurring for these syndromes, especially the Down syndrome. Okay, in Down syndrome, you will have you will have one every 800 pregnancies. So you will see one Down syndrome probably every two to three months. Okay, a girl of 21 years old, they have a chance to have this problem one every eight, 1,800 pregnancies. But a woman of 44 years old, they have a chance to have Down syndrome one every 15 pregnancies. So the risk is going to increase. Okay, all right, so that is about this. Okay, we are getting that? Okay? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, let's talk about the X link. Uh, all right, so X link, you on the break? You don't tell me you on the break. Kathy, you on the break? Uh, Daniela, you on the break? It's time for a break. Daniela, you're sleeping? Or was my idea? Daniela? Daniela, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Okay, Monica, break, right? Okay. Um, I'm okay. Do you want a break? Uh, yeah. I think you need a break. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take a coffee. Okay. okay. <laughs> Me too. All right, see you then. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's 10 minutes or, or lunch break? 10 minutes and then minutes. Oh, yeah. 10 minutes. You want to talk today, Nikki. Huh? You, are the, you are the star today. Excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> see you in 10 minutes. I will see 6.51.
Hello. Okay. All right, so Okay, let's go let's go shopping, okay? Homework. Let's go to shopping. All right, so let's go, uh, Mr. Tom, uh, probably you, you, let's see. Uh, let's go to uh, any store. Let's go in Taylor. You like in Taylor? No? No. Gucci, <laughs> what do you like? Look at that, Daniela, she's... Gucci. <laughs> Look at Daniela. Okay, let's go shopping. And you have a nice purse. Okay, well, uh, okay, Gucci, Gucci purse. Okay, Gucci purse. Okay, well, in San Mateo, there is no Gucci. And Taylor, yes, yeah, so let me make it an Taylor. An Ant Taylor dress is probably better. Shoes, not so much. But dresses are okay. Okay, let's make a dress. Okay, dress for a party. Okay, so in San Mateo, we have and Taylor, and you want a dress. Okay, that dress is a dress, a dress. So you don't know the color, you look at, you look in the style, the color, right? Now, uh, let's go to another Ann Taylor store. And let's go to San Francisco. Okay, San Francisco. So now, we have two different cities, correct? Okay, but... Yes. You're in order to compare, you're not going to go to Home Depot in San Francisco. Home Depot is another another line of uh, of, of selling seats, right? Okay, so now those those cities are different are actually two different chromosomes. And the Ann Taylor store are the genes. So these two stores in different chromosomes in different cities, these two stores and tailors, both of them are going to be corresponding to homologous chromosomes, homologous stores. You okay with that? So you cannot compare. Okay, so let's go to Ann Taylor. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, now let's go to, to Home Depot. Nothing to do there, right? You will look, look, you will look all your life and you will not find anything. Right, so that is similar what I'm saying about homologous chromosomes and the gene characteristic for the dress for that characteristic. You okay with that? That that is more clear now. Yes. 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 Okay. okay. So in the break, I was trying to think about how to. Well, anyhow, let's do it. Now another another thing. Do you know somebody who has uh, who is having? Who is suffering from or having a blind uh, color blindness? Yes. Okay. Uh, Tom, I, you said yes, right? This is a uh, this is a, a a man, right? A male, right? Who else having uh, uh, color blindness? Knowing somebody, Teresa, you know somebody? No. I don't. You do, Daniel. Daniel, that is a male, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, Nikki, you know somebody? Yeah. Male, correct? Yeah. Right. Julia, you know somebody with color blindness? No. You, uh, Monica? Yes. Male, correct? My dad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. Uh, Rachel, you know somebody with color blindness? No. Okay, no. Rina, you know with color blindness? No, no. Oh, sorry. Rina, Rina? No. Uh, okay, and um, Kat, please. No? Okay. So what is in common, what I said, is uh, male, right? Why male yes. will suffer more from color blindness than female? Okay? So that is typical, typical characteristic of a sexual chromosome. So the 22 
chromosomes, autosomal chromosomes, okay? So those are going to be characteristic for Down syndrome, for other ones that is uh, a, a, the Criducat or Edward syndrome. So those are autosomal. But when you are talking about sexual chromosomes, there is other different types of chromosomes that are involved in the problem. I will tell you yes, without knowing, uh, without giving graphics or all that. So listen to this. So the the problem of of coral blindness are going to be in the X chromosome, X sexual chromosome, in the X, X, not on the Y. Okay. Okay, listen to this. Now, if you have a female who has the X chromosome with color blindness, you know, female are going to be XX, correct? And male is going to be XY, correct? Listen to this. Now, if you, if, if the female is having one of the X chromosomes abnormal for color blindness, that woman will not have color blindness. Why? Because this female have an extra chromosome X, the other X, that is most likely normal, and they are going to compensate. So this woman will be a carrier, but will not show in the disease. Is that clear? Now, in a male, in a male, we have an X chromosome as well but we have a, a Y chromosome. And that Y chromosome is totally different from the X. So that Y cannot compensate the abnormality of the X chromosome. And that's why male are more commonly having coral blindness. Is that clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that is one. But there is other diseases that are going to be uh, for example, hemophilia. Do you hear about hemophilia before? Daniela, you hemophilia? Yes. Do you know somebody with hemophilia? Yes. Male, correct? Um, actually, she has um, a girl and a boy. They both suffer from it. The girl do? Mm-hmm. So that means that the chromosome X of the father is a carrier. So the father was hemophilic. The father is hemophilic and the mother was having the, the uh, a carrier of hemophilia in the X. So that's why they combine and they have, uh, but this is very uncommon. Huh? The most common are going to be in male. All right, okay. All right, so, and that is one. So another another pathology, another abnormality is going to be uh, this. All right, so let me go here and make a, a chart here. Okay, so there is one that is called the uh, absence of one chromosome, there you are. So for example, we have, um, you and I, we have, we males, we have X, Y. And you girls, you have 46 X, X. There is an abnormality called the Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome. That is going to be one every 4,800 pregnancies. Okay, we don't care about that. That the, chromosome, the chromosomes on this uh, uh, persons are going to be 45 X zero. What is zero? Is a new chromosome? No. They put zero because there is nothing. Where is my... There is nothing. It's just like that. And they put zero means that this means nothing. There is no other chromosome. Okay? So this, uh, this patient or this person are going to born, are going to born with uh, actually with one X, and this is a male or female, 45 X zero. Female. Do you, somebody knows Turner syndrome? No. No, okay. 
So this 45 x zero, this is going to have one x. So they have some characteristic of female, but this is not a complete female, and it's not a male neither. Okay. So this girl, when they born, they born without a penis. They don't have penis. So they say, oh, if they have a penis, it's a girl. Okay? They say they think it's a girl because they don't have the chromosome Y so that produce the penis, right? So it's, and they grow as a girl. And the problems are coming when they go into a menarche, that is the first menstrual cycle average in the United States is 12.7 years old. And that the, there is a delay. There is no secondary sexual characteristics. And they do a, a chromosomal mapping that I showed you in the previous slides. That is going to be the absence of a chromosome, uh, the extra chromosome. For example, in this image, for example, they are not going to have this chromosome. There is an absence that is a deletion delete they're going to be deleted and that's why it's the 145 x zero that is another problem of sexual chromosome okay with that you only have one chromosome x the other chromosome is absent all right we okay with that yes yeah, yeah. okay perfect okay So it's trisomy, it's not trisonomy, it's trisomy, okay, Down syndrome. So that is, here we have an ultrasound. This is about 18 weeks of gestation, yes. Here we have the placenta, here is the placenta, this is the amniotic fluid as a black. This is the facial profile of the Down syndrome. And you see the, the, the normal, here is the normal uh, frontal bone, the uh, sinciput. The, no, the nasal uh, the nasal bone, the lips and the chin. But look at this. Here we have a flat bosin um, uh, forehead, flat nose and receding chin. That is the profile. So this is the face of the baby, face of the baby. This is normal and this is down syndrome. Okay? I'm not going to go talk about segregation or disjunction. We will never talk about that later. All right, so X-Link. All right, so... All right, so if there's any question, please, yes, let me know, and we are going to talk about the male reproductive system. Okay? Are you ready? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Talking about the male reproductive uh, system, the male reproductive system are going to, let's start with this uh, um, graphic. There's no more, uh, okay. And we are going to do metro to, today, okay, metrology. Okay, let's start with this. Okay, so the male reproductive organs are going to let's start talking about the scrotum tell me one thing a scrotum is the same to say testicles yes or no yes the scrotum is uh, the, scr the scrotum is not testicle the scrotum is the sac that holds the testicles exactly is the membrane or tissue surrounding the testicle so where is the scrotum? The scrotum is here. Look at this. This is a scrotum. A scrotum, 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 a scrotum. A scrotum is basically like a like a container. It's a bag, like a bag. Okay, you have let's have a piece of bread, a bread, and put it in a plastic bag. The bread is the testicle, and the plastic bag is the scrotum. So Testic, the bread is not the plastic, and the plastic is not the bread, correct? All right, so the testicle is the testicle, and the scrotum is the surrounding, is the tissues or the sac membrane, saccular membrane, that are going to contain the testicles. You okay with that? 
Yes. yes. Now, why, why the scrotum are going to be outside of the body? Why the scrotum is going to be outside in between legs? For the temperature? Temperature, temperature, very well. Here in the testicle, here inside the testicle, are going to happen, is going to happen the spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis is the formation of the spermatozoids. Okay? These spermatozoids are going to, the production of the spermatozoids are going to be very sensitive to the temperature. So, uh, do you have, uh, tell me, do you have, uh, do you have a baby, the first visit they go to the doctor? Do you check that? The doctor, what he's doing is putting the baby, uh, laying down like a, like a chicken, right? Like a chicken. And they do the legs like this, right? Right? So why they do that? Because they want to see if there's a click on the femur. It's a click on the femur. So that means that there is some displacement. Then what we do is to touch the head here. To see the fontanelles. The spaces are between bones. And then we touch the testicles. We want to touch the testicles to know if the testicles are descending, are descend already in the next crop. And for that, you have only one year to make the testicles be present on the testicles. If the testicles are going to stay inside the, in the pelvis or not descending inside your body, in one year, those testicles by the temperature of the body are going to be totally useless. They are not going to work anymore because they do not able to produce actually spermatozoids. People who are uh, truck drivers, truck drivers, they can have some infertility problems because even though the scrotum is outside the body, the the, the engines of the truck drivers are going to be. They are sitting on the engine, and it's always very hot. And that, with the time, can produce problems with infertility. Are you okay with that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So uh, now, okay. All right. So let's keep let's keep going. The temperature that are going to occur there, the the temperature in the scrotum, are going to be one Celsius lower than the rest of the body. One Celsius lower. One great Celsius lower than the rest of the body. Okay? Okay. So now, this is the testicle surrounded by the, by the, uh, by the scrotum. The scrotum is having seven layers. They're coming from fascias of the muscle, coming from the pelvis. It's kind of elaborate. Okay? Uh, all right, so one thing. Uh, Tom. Yes. Did you ever hit or, or, or <laughs> smash your testicles in the past? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, me too, in the basketball. I was playing, oh so my God, I was like on the floor like uh, 20 minutes just trying to breathe. <laughs> and you know what? I got kicked. Yeah, you, you know that, you know that, okay. So, I, but you girls, I want to tell you something about that. The pain of the testicle is equivalent of hitting the breast. For us, yeah. So, the, if you you kick the, the breast, that was, I was receiving a kick. <laughs> and that is exactly, the, it's, the, it's not exactly, it's the equivalence of the pain that we have when somebody kick our testicles. So the breast is very sensitive too. So it can be having, so you have infections sometimes and that can produce a lot of pain, a lot of pain. Okay, all right, we're okay with that? All right, so let's go to the testicle. Let's go to the testicle, okay? All right, so let's suppose that you are in the testicle. Nikki, okay? Your room is a testicle. Okay, okay. 
So touch the walls of your room that are the frame of the testicle. This is testicle, okay? And I'm going to show you the image of the testicle here. Okay, so if you see here, I'll probably use this one. Uh, it's not that clear. I will do... Yeah, this is, that testicle is okay. Okay, can you see this image? I'm going to make a, 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 a close-up. Okay? We get it? We gave you that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, where is your room, Nikki? Your room is this. This is your room. Okay? Those are the walls. If you see here the chi rock, the walls of your room, they are going to have some projections, a continuation, elongation, that are going to go and imagine the walls of your room are going to have the continuation of the chi rock and produce 250 divisions. 250 divisions. So your room right now, they have 250 compartments, okay? All right. Yes. So keep touching the wall of your room, and that wall is going to be called the tunica albuginia. Tunica albuginia. Albu means white. White. Okay. White. And that's why, because the testicle, remember, we have two testicles, right? The testicles are going to measure five by four by three centimeters. So that is the size of, at one time I remember, what I asked you, what is the size of a testicle? And somebody put me like 20 centimeters. Oh my God, that is a, a bull, a what? Because it's huge, it's 20 centimeters too big. It's five centimeters old, it's like two inches. So this is like a, 20 centimeters, like eight, nine inches. There is no testicle like that. Okay. So now, this is tunica albuginia are going to create these compartments. These compartments are going to be called the lobules. Lobules, 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 lobules. Their L is equal to say lobules. These lobules are formed by the by the tunica albuginia. By the tunica albuginia. You okay? You follow me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, can you see this inside like a spaghetti? Yes. Uh, yes. This is spaghetti is not a spaghetti. It's actually the semi-nifero tubules. semi niferous tubules. We have this spaghetti, we have one to four semi-nifero tubules. These tubules are going to be tubules, like, a, like a, a tube. So they have a lumen, they have a space. They're going to be like this, right? Let's make a, 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 a cut here and make it like this, right? So then I'm going to make a cross-section of the semi-nifero tubules and the semi nifero tubules, what we have inside, are going to be the spermatozoids. The spermatozoids. So, where are formed the, the spermatozoids? The spermatozoids are going to be formed in the semi nifero tubules. You okay with that? Question for the exam. Open eyes, open ears. Okay? okay? So, these are the semi nifero tubules, semi nifero tubules, semi nifero tubules. Semi nifero tubules, semi nifero tubules, semi nifero tubules, semi nifero tubules. You follow me? We okay with that? Yes. 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 Now, yes. If for some magic procedure, you take two testicles and take all the semi nifero tubules, and you know that the semi nifero tubules are going to produce spermatozoids inside, correct? If you put semi nifero tubules one after another, like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, one after another, you can make a line of one and a half miles. One and a half miles. 
So it's a lot. So males, we can produce spermatozoids until 80, 90, whatever, right? Female, no. So we are going to explain in another moment. So what happened here is that these seminiferous tumors are going to have a heart rate of cell division, of meiosis, where they are going to have haploid cells. The, the spermatozoids they have haploid uh, uh, number of chromosomes. And you know how many spermatozoids we produce we produce, we produce 1,500 new spermatozoids every single second. So, 1,500 right now. One, two, oh, 3,000. One more sec, one sec, oh, 4,500. See how fast they reproduce these guys? And I call poor guys because they're going to die somehow i will tell you why is that why i'm saying that okay so that is the seminiferous tumors we okay with that all right so then what happened what happened is that during the they're, they're going to migrate later later on they're going to migrate to where so the spermatozoids are coming here i'm going to draw here like uh, let's make a black Spermatozoids, spermatozoids coming, the spermatozoids, 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 all these are going to go in this direction. They are going to go to the efferent, to the red testes, we don't care about that. And what they are going to end? They end into this structure here. Not this on the side, only this. Only this. That is called the epididymis. The epididymis. This epididymis is the is like the college. Let's put it that way. Why the epididymis is the college? Because that area, you know, the the spermatozoids when they born or they uh, re, re, just uh, just uh, uh, being created, these spermatozoids are too young to know anything. They don't know anything. They are literally immature. Immature. And why I call immature, I will tell you in a few moments. And they get into the college, that is the epididymis. That is where they get mature, in the epididymis. So they get mature. If there is no ejaculation, what happens with these uh, spermatozoids that are in the epididymis? They are going to degenerate. They are going to disappear and reabsorb. Okay? Now, question for the exam. Where is the epididymis? The epididymis, question for the exam, the epididymis are located where? If you see here the epididymis, the epididymis are going to be superior and posterior to the testicle. Don't forget that, superior and inferior, and sub, uh, superior and posterior, superior and posterior, superior and posterior. Somebody have a backpack here? A backpack. Yeah. So when you use the backpack, you are going, you right now, you are going to be a testicle. You're a testicle. You're a testicle. And the backpack, put it in your back. That is your epididymis. So how is the how where is the backpack? Posterior and superior, or superior, posterior. Got it? Okay. Yes. So now, yes. uh, the spermatozoids get immature. They need to have to gain maturity, right? And in order to get maturity, so I'm going to draw you an, an spermatozoid. And the spermatozoids are going to be, this is the head of the spermatozoid. Here we have the neck of the spermatozoid, and we have the tail. The tail are going to be moved 
here in the neck, we have a lot of mitochondria that are going to need calcium. Calcium, they need calcium in order to mo uh, make move the, like a small engine, the motility or the movement of the spermatozoa. This tail is, they don't know how to move it yet. <laughs> they don't know how to move it. So they are going to get mature and they already know how to move it, the tail, when they are in the epididymis, the tail. This is the body, this is the neck, and this is the tail. Now, that is number one. The tail and neck are going to uh, gain motility. Full motility. They start having some motility, but they move like, like they don't know how to move it. But in the epididymis, they know exactly, very rhythmically, how to move the tail. In order to locomotion, waiting for the ejaculation. Now, neck, neck we see here, sorry. Okay, neck. And then the, the, uh, the, the body of the, of the, of the what? So it's not body, it's head, sorry. Come on, please, what happened with this? Oh God. Uh, this is the neck, the tail and the head. Okay, so in the head you have here we have the N chromosomes, could be including X or, or Y, correct? But here on the tip of the, of, the, of the head, it's like you have a hat. This is called the acrosome. Acrosome. What is inside of this acrosome? We have enzymes. These enzymes are not matured yet. Enzyme. So why do we need those enzymes? When you have the ovum here and the spermatozoa is coming, they are going to touch down the, the cell membrane of the ovum. When they do touch down on the head or, or on, the, on the ovum, they are going to open this acrosome and they are going to release enzymes. These enzymes are going to make an opening on the on the ovum, and the chromosome end are going to get inside the ovum. So that is the end of the, what we call the fertilization. We get with that? So that's why we need to have those enzymes. The acrosome and the motility are very important for that. So where is that happening? In the epididymis. We get with that? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Now, here we have the sperm, the sperm that is getting here in the epididymis, and then there is going to happen during the ejaculation. The, during ejaculation, they are going to be like a like a going down skiing down the hill. <laughs> they are going to be two hundred fifty miles per hour, that is the speed of the spermatozoid during the ejaculation. Very fast, right? Very fast. And they are going to go all the way this tube, all the way this tube. This tube is outside of the, of the body, in the testicle, and then they are going to get into the body, inside. And then they are going to go side by side side by side of the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder is this. That is the urinary bladder. This urinary bladder, uh, please, don't, they don't perforate the urinary bladder, are going to run side by side of the urinary bladder because we have two testicles, right? But, and this tube, I will tell, first of all, I need to give you the name. This tube, all this tube, all this tube, 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 all this tube is called the bus deference. Or called the ductus deference. Either way. 
So they're going to go during the ejaculation, they're going to, uh, all the spermatozoid, sperm or spermatozoids are going to travel through the bus deferens or ductus deferens at this speed. And they are going to be released about 350 million spermatozoids per ejaculation. Each for all the ejaculation is 350 million. So 350 million, what is this number? 350 million is like the number of the population of the United States. We are in 330, 340, but 350 million is basically similar. So in the United States, you're going to have 350 million people. So all the population in the United States is just in one ejaculation. Can you imagine? It's a lot, right? And tell me, how many of these guys are going to survive? Only one. So kill everybody in the United States except one. So that is an slaughtering. That's what I said, poor spermatozoids. Okay? All right. So these spermatozoids are going to go all the way up to the bus difference, they're going from outside, they're going inside the, the what? The, the body, the pelvis, and they go and get another structure that I'm going to show you now. Let me see here. This picture is very, 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 uh, very simple to understand. Here we have the bus difference. This is the bus difference, bus difference. Please do not perforate the urinary bladder. That is a cartoon. They go side by side of the urinary bladder. So they go to the urinary bladder, and this, this what? Here, you see that uh, they are going to get at this point, that is the end of the bus difference, that is getting the spermatozoid. But on the side, we have a gland here. We have a gland. This gland is called the seminal vesical fluid, the seminal vesical gland. And what is going to secrete is the seminal vesical fluid. Okay? <clears throat> so the ejaculation, ejaculation is going to take about two to three ml. You know that one ml is the same to say one cc, correct? Yes or no? Okay? Yes. So from this volume of fluid of the, uh, of the ejaculation, what happened is that 60% of that volume is the seminal vesical fluid. 60% of the fluid. And one of the characteristics of this fluid is that contain fructose. Fructose. What is fructose? Fructose is a monosaccharide. It's a sugar. Okay. Why do we need to know there is fructose in the seminal vesicular fluid? Because all the way from the testicle down to the urethra is going to be, if the spermatozoid is your size, human size, if you have the human size of a spermatozoid, all this pathway from the testicle, vas deferens, and all down to the urethra is like running, up, uh, running towards uh, all the San Mateo Bridge, that is eight miles. Eight miles and a half. So that is the distance that spermatozoid they need to run through, okay, to to go out from the body, and then when they get into the female reproductive system, they need to they need to, to they need to run again another eight miles, and these poor spermatozoids they don't have lunch, they don't have any break or anything, right? They have one mission only. And they don't have food around. The only food that they, call, they count is this fructose that is coming from the seminal vesical fluid. Do you okay with that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, here is the seminal vesical fluid. How many seminal vesical fluid uh, glands we have? Two. One on the right, one on the left. Okay. Now. Here we are going to see below. Can you see the urinary bladder here? This is the urinary bladder. What is below under is the prostate. This is the prostate. This is the prostate. 
the prostate is under and be below the urinary blood. So this is the prostate. The prostate is going to be like, how is the fruit? I always forgot. It's the chestnut. This is a prostate. So this is the sagittal view. If you see here, this is the urinary bladder are going to get some duct that is perforating the prostate. Can you see that? That is where it's coming the urine. And the urine go through the prostate outside to the, to the world, right? Okay. So now, this prostate, are this area, this line, this tube is called the prostatic urethra. Prostatic urethra, urethra, urethra. And here, from all the penis here, that is the urethral, the penile urethra. Okay? So we have two urethras, right? Okay, the urethra that is passing through the prostate and they go to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, Urethra, the pain, pain urethra. All right, so now this is going the prostate that is, I want you to remember, is under behind, below the urinary bladder. This prostate, especially people who are uh, having uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy or hyperplasia, the BPH. The prostate are going to uh, going to enlarge, and when they go enlarge, they are going to basically uh, collapse the prostatic urethra, so the pee cannot go out. In this patient with BPH, benign, pros, benign prostatic hypertrophy, they are going to have retention of urine, and the urinary bladder is going to distend and distend. It's a lot of painful and produce infections. Okay? Now, so this is, this prostatic urethra is going to be a common pathway for the fluid that is coming from the seminal vesicle. So this seminal vesicle are going to drain here in the prostatic urethra. What else? Seminal vesicle fluid. What else is going to drain? It's going to drain the sperm as well. The sperm. So here is in this prostatic urethra are going to drain the seminal vesicle fluid and the sperm. You okay with that? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So this common duct you have here, this one, that is where it's coming the bus difference and it's coming the seminal vesicle fluid. This portion is called it's called the uh, ejaculatory duct. What is the ejaculatory duct? It's a common pathway duct for, for the seminal vesicle fluid plus the sperm. And when they are going to drain this ejaculatory duct, they are going to drain into the prostatic <sighs> urethra. Somebody tell me? Prostatic urethra. Okay, we got it? Yes. All right, so look at this. This is the, the bus difference and the semi, sem, semi, uh, seminal vesicle uh, gland duct are going to drain together here into the ejaculatory duct. The ejaculatory duct drain into the prostatic urethra. And then what happened? There is a fluid in the prostatic urethra. The, the, the urethra that is a slightly smaller than the testicle is 432. They are going to have in the composition of the urethra. I hear some, some background, please. It, oh, here sorry. A longitudinal view here. In the longitudinal view of the prostate, we have this duct. That is the prostatic duct. But they have different components of the prostate, the central, peripheral, transitional, and the, on the top we have a fibromuscular area. So yes, the prostate, they have a muscle. 
they have a muscle. The prostate, I compare that like a sponge, like a sponge, a sponge with fluid. During the, during the ejaculation, the many muscles are going to contract, okay? And one of these uh, contractions are going to occur, these contractions are going to occur in the prostate. So when the prostate is contracting, it's like a sponge with a fluid. You squeeze the sponge and all the fluid is coming out, correct? So similar happen with the prostate. So the prostate are going to add fluid to the seminal vesicle, to the sperm, and that fluid is called the prostatic fluid. Prostatic fluid. Where is coming from? From the prostate. This prostatic fluid represents about 40%, 40% of the, of the semen. Of the two, three amounts, 40% are coming from the prostate. This prostatic fluid are going to be, question for exam, are going to contain a lot of calcium, a lot of calcium. This calcium, this calcium is needed for the motility of the tail of the spermatozoid. Will you okay with that? Yes. Okay. So, and this calcium is what is giving the uh, uh, appearance that is whitish, is white. The, the, the semen is going to be white. Why? Because they have a lot of calcium. Who is doing that? The prostatic fluid. In addition to that, we are going to see that prostatic fluid is very alkaline is alkaline, 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 pH more than seven. It's going to be alkaline, alkaline. Why is alkaline? The prostatic fluid is alkaline because that is, if the prostatic fluid is coming, what is inside the prostatic fluid coming with are the spermatozoids, correct? So the spermatozoids are surrounded by alkaline, alkaline substance, that is a prostatic fluid. Why is this? Because the vagina, vagina, the normal flora of the vagina is acid. It's very acid, very acid. So in conclusion, the vagina is very hostile for the spermatozoids. So if the spermatozoids without this prostatic fluid, with this alkalinity, they are going to basically fry, like frying them in a pan. So they're going to die, boom, right away. Okay? So when they are, they are going to swim in this prostatic fluid, and the prostatic fluid that is alkaline is going to basically shield them from the hostile environment of the vaginal uh, flora. You okay with that? Yes. That's, that is given time until the poor spermatozoids are going to reach the uterus. And the other dangerous scenes are going to occur then. Okay? We okay with that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Then the last part is going to be that the last part, and then I'm going to recap and put it together. We have another glance. Okay, sorry. We have another glands that are here. These glands after the prostate. After the prostate, these glands are going to be called the Cooper gland. Cooper's gland. And these Cooper's gland are going to secrete a clear fluid that is going to be a clear fluid that is going to be used as a lubricant. This lubricant is going to be secreted during the arousal of the, of the person in order to prepare for the intercourse. Okay, we got it? Now, conclusion here is they're going to ask you what is sealed? Please, very common mistake in the exams is that people say semen is a spermatozoid. 
semen is sperm, and that is not true. Sperm or spermatozoids are part of the semen. Semen and sperm are different things. Sperm is going to be a component of the semen. So what is the semen at the end? It's going to be a sperm plus fluid. seminal vesical fluid plus prostatic fluid plus the Cooper's, okay. Cooper's gland fluid. Cow fluid, uh, Cooper's gland fluid. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. All this is going to be two to three cc or mls, you, you say, of volume of the semen. You okay with that? 40% prostatic fluid, calcium, alkaline, 60% seminal vesical fluid, fructose, I, 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 I explain why, and the sperm, about 350 million spermatozoids. All together are going to be the same. Is that clear? Yes. Yes. There's other glands that are actually in the, uh, around the lumen of the penile urethra are going to be called the litre. The litre. Litre glands. Uh, just forget that. It's actually not very... I don't know why in the textbook they don't teach that. But anyhow, whatever. So just remember four of them. Now, another thing that you need to remember is open eyes, open ears, as a recap. What is the pathway of the, of the sperm? The pathway of the sperm will be testicle, second, seminiferous tubules, and I mean, uh, no, you can, yeah, seminiferous tubules. No, you start with seminiferous tubules. What is the pathway of the, of the sperm? Seminiferous tubules, one. Second, the epididymis. Third, the, the what? The vas deferens. Four, the uh, prostatic urethra. And five, the penile urethra. Simple as that. How many testicles we have? Two testicles. Okay. How many epididymis we have? Two epididymis. How many vas deferens we have? Two bus deferens. How many seminal vesicle flu uh, glands we have? Two seminal vesicle glands. How many prostate we have? Only one. One prostate. Prostate. How many penile urethra? Only one. Okay. So everything is everything basically is two except the prostate. You okay with that? Yes. 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 Okay. yes. Excellent. All right. So. All right, so let's have, uh, what time is it, please? 7.45. Okay, so we have lunch break? We have lunch break already? No. 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 All right, so I will see you at 8.15. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.
Hello. Okay, so let's let's continue with the female reproductive system. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's get started with the division of the female reproductive system. In male, actually, there is no upper, lower, and it's just the description of the internal organs of the pelvis. Now, um, here in the female reproductive system, Whatever. Okay, are going to be divided into two components: the uterus and the adnexa. The adnexa and adnexa are going to be divided into the ovaries. and the fallopian tubes. Okay, this classification is important because you will see in med search and uh, actually, uh, uh, especially in maternity, you will see some uh, terms that are going to uh, tell you a few things. Um, right, so for example, the Inflammation of the fallopian tubes are going to be called salpingitis. Salpingo, salpingo means fallopian tube. Okay. Itis means inflammation. Okay. Now, in the ovaries, when the ovaries are inflamed, are going to be called O for iris. O for iris. O means ovary. And <clears throat> the other one is going to be an exa when this is going to be ovaries and fallopian tubes are going to be called adnexitis. Okay. This is very common especially uh, for STDs, uh, sexual transmitted diseases, like gonorrhea, the, the gonococcus, the ground negative, that are going to affect all the fallopian tubes and the ovaries, and basically, mostly affect are going to be the fallopian tubes that can lead into infertility. Infertility. Okay, so that is one. <clears throat> The other one, we have the uterus. The uterus is going to measure long six centimeters by five width by four, that is the anterior posterior, the depth. All right, so how, how big is a uterus? A uterus is, if you show me your pink finger, pinky finger, that is about six centimeters. So that is about the uterus size, okay? Uh, when you are pregnant, when you're pregnant, the uterus are going to enlarge, are going to be distended up to 45 centimeters. About 45 centimeters. So basically it's more than seven times the size of the initial, initially the size of the uterus. It's like touch your biceps in your muscle, the muscle biceps in your arm, and try to stretch out that muscle seven times. Amazing, right? So that is what happened with the uterus during the pregnancy. Okay, 
the division of the of the division division of the uterus are going to be having different compartments. Uh, all right, so one is going to be the upper one that is going to be the fundus. Then we have the body. And we have the cervix. The cervix or neck of the uterus. Okay? That is the division from outside. The division inside of the uterus, the uterine layers, are going to be three again. Number one is going to be the endometrium. Number two is going to be the myometrium. the middle layer, and number three, the perimetrium. So all of this is what we are going to see in the next minutes. Okay, so let's continue. So here we are going to have the division of the uterus, and the uterus are going to be the fundus. This is the fundus up to here, that is the fundus, the fundus of the uterus, all this, the question for the exam, the largest portion of the uterus is going to be the body of the uterus. And here, from this line down, is the cervix, or the neck of the uterus. So here we have, <clears throat> if you see here, this is the vagina or birth canal, and the vagina doesn't end here. That is not the end of the vagina, see? So what happened is the part of the uterus, especially the, the cervix, are going to be immersed inside the vaginal, uh, vaginal cavity. So that is very important to know because when you are going to deliver baby, by the way, I'm doing the simulations to deliver babies, okay? I'm the one who create all the steps and all the stuff. And uh, they're going to have, uh, for example, these cervix are going to decrease in thickness. It's called effacement. And that is actually telling you in what stage of labor it is. So just to mention that. But the cervix, let's go to the anatomy. This is going to measure about three by three by three centimeters. Sometimes they go four by three by three, four centimeters. So this cervix is actually, when you get pregnant, this is going to be close, like here, like a, like a progesterone a plaque here. And that is going to isolate the baby here alone. So there is no invasion of bacteria or any uh, microbe into the uterus. All right. So this uh, this uh, cervix are going this line here this opening is called the endocervical canal endocervical canal we have two openings one opening is here and another opening is here this is called the internal os. Os. Os means opening. And this is the external os. External os. So internal os, external os, and endocervical canal. Cervix is like the size of marshmallow, are going to be three by three by three. Okay? So again, yes. endocervical canal, external loss, and the internal loss. Okay, we got it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. And the uterus is divided in the fundus, 
body and the neck of the uterus. C-section, well, okay, another time. All right, so here we have, uh, we are going to do the layers. I'm going to make it like a purple, yeah? So the layers are going to be the inner layer. Let's make it from the outer layer first. This is the outer layer. This is the outer layer, very thin layer. This outer layer is called the perimetrium. Then we have this thick area here. All this thick area is muscle. All this thick area is muscle. This muscle is called the myometrium. And we have another inner layer, the one who is slough off during the menstrual cycle, is this. Let me see if I draw it properly. No. <clears throat> okay. This is the endometrium. A little bit exaggerate. The endometrium can measure up to 14 millimeters thickness, and before they go to the menstrual cycle, the bleeding. All right. So what I'm trying to do here is this. If you notice here, this is the endometrium. This is the endometrium. This endometrium are going to be very thick at the level of the fundus. So this is the fundus here. At the level of the fundus, the endometrium get, is getting very thick. But as long as they go down close to the cervix, the thickening of the endometrium are going to get smaller and more thinner and thinner and thinner. So in the endocervical canal, there is a little bit of endometrium, not as much as the fundus. So the more close to the fundus, the more uh, actually thicker is the, is the what? The endometrium. Why I need to know that? Why? Because when the egg is going to be fertilized, the fertilization is going to be happening, what we call the implantation. So it's coming the ovum with the fertilized egg here, and they are going to implant here in the fundus. So that is the best place. Is the best place for implantation. Implantation sounds like a plant, right? You have the soil, the fertilized egg is coming, and basically like a soil, they are going to be buried. They are going to get into the endometrium. Why? Because this endometrium is going to have is going to be thicker. Why? Because they have a lot of vessels, a lot of vascularization, a lot of arteries and veins. Why arteries and veins? Because they carry a lot of oxygen and nutrients. So the best place is going to be here, in the fundus. When the implantation occurs closer to the cervix, there is a risk for miscarriages. Why? Because the endometrium is more thin. Okay, we got it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, so knowing that, that we already talked about the uterus, the uterus is a pear shape, right? And uh, the uterus is going to be, I'm going to show you an image, probably it's here. The location of the uterus. The location of the uterus, let me see here. No, I don't have it. Uh, oh, no, this is male. Okay. Okay, so that is anatomy physiology. It's not here now. But I'm going to tell you. What is anterior? So let's make a sagittal view of the image, and the uterus is, if you call sagittal view, this is anterior, this is posterior, the uterus are going to be having this shape. This is the vagina, and this is the uterus. So you see the uterus is laying down anteriorly, and here what we have is the urinary bladder. And here what we have posterior is the rectum rectum. So 
So it's going to be in between the, the, the uterus are going to be in between the rectum and the urinary blood. When you are getting pregnant, for example, this anatomy in relation is important. Why? Because when the uterus is start to enlarge, this is going to compress the urinary blood. So there is less space for the urine. So that's why women are going to uh, increase the frequency to urinate. Okay, they can produce constipation sometimes because they are going to basically block the rectum because of the, of the enlargement of the uterus. There is different positions of the uterus that is not the topic for today. All right, so now, the, now that we talk about the uterus, we are going to talk about the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is going to measure about 12 centimeters. So if you didn't measure your finger, that you're missing the opportunity to at least visualize what is the size of the fallopian tube. If you put your two in uh, your, let's make it your index and your pinky finger, your index on one hand and the pinky finger in the other hand, that is about 12 centimeters. That is basically the size of the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube is not like a, like a, a plumbery uh, tube. It's very flexible, very, very flexible. This is very flexible. And this flexibility are going to make the fallopian tube to be into peristalsis. Peristalsis is just not only in the a term used for gastrointestinal system, but for other, other, other elements. Peristalsis, for example, have the bile duct, peristalsis, the pancreatic duct, peristalsis, the ureters, peristalsis have the fallopian tube. All right, so let's talk about the division of the fallopian tube. The division of the fallopian tube are going to be, number one, are going to be the infundibulum. Where is the infundibulum? All of this is the infundibulum. All of this is the infundibulum. Then we have the ampulla. The ampulla, oh, by the way, the fallopian tube is going to measure about four millimeters diameter and two millimeters lumen. Plenty of space for the ovum to travel through. Right, so uh, we have the, if this is two millimeter lumen, the ovum is going to be about one tenth, 0 0.1 millimeters. So very tiny. So we have plenty of space to travel through. So uh, infundibulum is going to be number one. Number two, we have the ampulla. Question for the exam. Open eyes, open ears. Ampulla is the largest portion or the longest portion of the fallopian tube. Tube. Okay, and here in the ampulla is where it's going to happen the fertilization. It's going to happen the fertilization. Here in the ampulla. So the ampulla is going from here to here. So all this is the ampulla. That is the area where it's going to occur the fertilization. Then we have the, uh, the isthmus that is actually a more narrow area that is going to be in contact with the uterus. The isthmus is the third part. So we have infundibulum, the ampulla, the isthmus, and then a tube, the fallopian tube is going to literally perforate the, perforate the uterus. And this is called the intramural portion of the fallopian tube, this one. Okay? You okay with that? Yes. 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 I don't know why he's crying. Okay, my God. Okay. Can you okay. repeat what you said about the ampulla? So sorry, sorry. Large. Tell me again. Can you just repeat what you said about the ampulla? The longest portion. Yeah. Ampulla is the largest portion of the fallopian tube. Where is the ampulla? It's here. Oh, this is the ampulla. Thank you. And this ampulla is where it's going to occur the fertilization. Fertilization. Fertilization or fecundation or conception. Okay? Okay. So, all right. So, we are going to talk in a few moments. All right. So, that is about the fallopian tube.
Now, here we have in this term here, can you see here like uh, fingers? Right? Yes. This is called the fimbria. I'm going to write it down here again. Fimbria. It is a fimbria. Fibra is another term in Latin, you can write it down. Fimbria is the same. Okay? Okay. All right. So here we have this is the fimbria. So what is doing this fimbria? The fimbria, what is doing is doing this this movement. They are going to say like a fingers. They are going to basically they are going to make it like a, like a fingers. They are going to attract movement. And when is that happen? When the ovary when the ovary is coming. Uh, the ovum is coming out from the ovary, the fallopian tube, the fimbria, are going to make this movement to say, saying like, like, come ovum, come ovum, come to me, come to me, ovum, come to me, come to me, come to me, ovum. So this is basically a, a, co a consequence of the peristalsis of the fallopian tube. You okay with that? That's when you're ovulating? Yes, when you're ovulating, when you're ov ovulating, you're going to have this movement of the fimbria that are going to basically uh, uh, attract the ovum towards the fallopian tube. Okay? Is that the, I mean, uh, uh, the twinges that you feel when you're ovulating? Uh, no, that is the middle smears. So no, uh, not, not every female can feel the ovulation. There's women that said, oh, oh my God. Yeah, I just ovulate. Yeah, some women are able to do that, but not every every woman. Okay, so the ovulation when it occurs is going to literally is like a, a small pimple. The skin is the skin of the pimple is the surface of the ovary, and when the ovum ovum is going out, it's like you are breaking the pimple and you feel like like this. Of course, in the pelvis, right? Okay, we okay with that. But not everybody yeah, yeah. feels the meter smirts. Meter smirts is uh, somebody knows uh, meter smirts is the mid cycle pain. That is in the mid cycle is basically uh, during the ovulation. Okay. This is anatomy physiology. It's not yet for you, but actually I, I just mentioned because you want to talk about that. Okay. So then we have here the ovary. This is the ovary. The ovary is attached to the uterus by a, a ligament that, that is the proper ligament, ovarian ligament. We don't care about that, but I mentioned this because I don't want you to see that this is a connection with the, with the lumen or space, inner space of the uterus. It's just a ligament. It's like a rubber band that is going to uh, make closer, the, or make, make in position, put in position the ovary close to the to, to the uterus. Okay, all right. So let's talk about the the ovary. What time is it, please? Eight thirty nine. Oh, okay. We have plenty of time. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about the ovary. All right. So uh, let me see another space here. All right, so I want just you to listen and I'm going to write down. You're going to write down a few things. Okay, the ovary is going to be a hotline. Okay, a hotline. The ovary, the hotline number is 322. So that is the size of the of the of the ovary. Okay. It's a little bit smaller than the testicle. Okay, so we have two ovaries, right and left, correct? They are going to be attached to the area by six ligaments. We don't need to know the six ligaments uh, name, broad ligament, round, etc. No. So it just the ovary is not just floating in the air. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. The, the ovary is going to be fixed in place. Okay? All right, so the ovary do not produce ovaries. 
Okay, so what I mean with that? So the ovary is literally like a parking lot. It's a parking lot. And this parking lot is going to be populated by cars. The cars are coming, right? And the cars are going to represent the ovules. The ovules. So the ovules at the very beginning, at the very beginning, the ovules are never being in the ovary. They are in other location of in part of the GI tract. I'm not going to go into details, but there's a moment in the in life that the ovules are going to crawl, are going to move towards the parking lot. So the ovules are going to be like cars that are going to park in the parking lot. At the very beginning, you have you have four million ovules total. Four million ovules. Four million ovules. Four million. At the time you born, from those four million are going to exist only four hundred thousand ovules. Four hundred thousand ovules. So they are going to diminish ten percent of them. Right? It's a lot. So for four million, go down to four hundred thousand. And at the time of you are going to menstruate, that is the first menstrual period called menarche. You know what is menarche? Menarche? Okay, so I'm going to write it down. So I know some of you know it. That's fine. It's called menarche. I want the black. Ah, okay, no black. Okay, it's going to be Menard. Uh, what happened? All right. So in the fetal life, you're going to have four million ovules. So basically, those are oocytes, but let's call ovules. Then, at the time of when you're born, you're going to have four hundred thousand ovules. At the time of menarche. So they're going down here. At the time of menarche, the menarche in the United States average is going to be 12.7 years old. And that is going to be, the number of ovens are going to be 40,000 ovens. That's all what you have at the time that you start your menstrual cycle. From these four, 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 40,000 ovens, how many times you're going to have menstrual cycles in your span life? The span life or fertile, fertile age, fertile age is the time, the, in medicine, that is the time that we consider uh, the, uh, the time that we, women can get pregnant. And that is between 15 years old to 44 years old. So in this span life, how many times you're going to menstruate? The menstruation are going to be, number of menstrual periods are going to be 525 times in the span life. But you will say, but how come? If you have 550, 25 uh, ovules that are going to be released, so I have 40,000. So what is the problem here? What is the problem? What, what is happening is this. We have the ovary, and the ovary, we have all these, uh, I would say, all these ovens here. At the time of menarche, at the time of menarche, it's like they are sleeping, sleeping ovens, sleeping ovens, sleeping ovens. This is sleeping ovens. At the time of you're going to uh, uh, ovulate, they are going to proliferate from this. 10 of these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 10 to 12. So these 10 to 12 ovules, that having this, this is the reason for that, that I'm going to explain in anatomy physiology, they are going to basically disappear, all of them except one. So they are going to just degenerate, most of them, and one are going to survive. This one, they go close to the surface and they're going to open. That is going to happen the ovulation. 
that is the ovulation. Okay? So the time of menstrual cycle, menstrual cycle is going to be 28 days. I know, I know. Not everybody is 28 days. So, but this is what Enclet, HESI, ATI, uh, all, all medicine books are, are saying 28 days. Just to make it more real, only 15% of female are going to menstruate every 28 days. Okay? The range is between 25 to 32 days. That is the normal range. Less than 25 is oligomenorrhea, I mean polymenorrhea, and more than 32, oligomenorrhea. So another term. So, but yes, general things. You get with that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, once the ovum is, is uh, coming out from the fallopian, from the, from the ovary, okay, our friend, spermatozoid, is coming this way. And it's dying a lot of them. 350 million, like the population of the United States, are going to start surviving less and less and less and less and less. So if permatozoid, they make a mistake, the ovum is here, the ovum is here, it's traveling here, traveling here, traveling here, traveling here, and they go here in the fallopian, in the ampulla. Some of these guys, they go to the other side, so they get lost. And actually, they are going to die. The spermatozoids, the spermatozoids can last one day to seven days. So they can be around for a week, okay? Most commonly, three, four days is about. But more than that, they don't be. They are not there. The spermatozoid can last one to two days. So, but the fertilization that is going to happen here, the spermatozoid is coming this way, spermatozoid, spermatozoid, and here we have the, the, the spermatozoid finally is finding the ovum. That is where it's happening, the fertilization. Fertilization. And in order to fertilize the egg, the spermatozoid, they have only one day, only one day to find, one day to find the ovum. So what does that mean? So why seven, one seven days? But now I say one day. This one day is the time that the ovum is going to survive. So from the moment that the ovum is being released from the ovary, you have one day in order to get fertilized that ovum. Spermatozoids, if there is more than one day, there is no ovum. Spermatozoids that will be looking, 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 nobody's there, right? So that is the, actually the fertilization. You okay with that? Yes, yes, yes. In the ampulla. Now, the first, after the fertilization occurs, are going to pass six days. One day, two days, three days, four days, five days, and the six days are going to be in the uterus. That is an important, I'm not going to go on that, when we are talking about ectopic pregnancies, are going to be relevant. But at this moment, I'm just giving you the, the essential. Uh, but important, more than essential, by the way. So here is going to be the fertilization or fecundation or conception, and they are going to travel down here into the Fundus, that is the best place. These best place are going to be the fundus where you have a very thick endometrium, where you have a lot of oxygen and a lot of nutrients. So why is doing that? Because the placenta, placenta, you're, you're pregnant right now, you have placenta? No, you don't have placenta right away. The placenta is going to take 12 weeks in order to have full, full, uh, full uh, function. So it's going to work full functioning in about uh, three months, so 12 weeks. Meantime, the endometrium is going to, come, uh, are going to play a role to give the nutrients and the oxygen that the, the fertilized egg is needed or required. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that is about the, the. There is a lot more to talk, but we will see that in the next in the next course. One thing I'm going to repeat that in the next module is this. Can you imagine? I want you to imagine this. Can you imagine how many spermatozoids are in the ejaculation? 350 million spermatozoids. It's like the whole population of the United States. And Nikki, let's suppose that you are the ovum. You are the ovum, right? You are the ovum. Can you imagine all the United States after you? Like I'm a criminal, <laughs> just me, but yeah. Right? And you know, in the pathway, they are going to die right and left, right and left, the poor spermatozoids. And only one of them is going to be the lucky one and the winner. Right? Yes or no? Right? Yes. So these spermatozoids, besides they are going to die, all of them, only one is going to be able to reach the ovum. And that is the winner. Correct? But in reality, who is the winner? Who is the real, real winner? The ovum. The you, ovum. yes, each of us. Because that winner, it will be another spermatozoid different than fertilize the egg. You will be a different person. You will be a different face, different everything. So you are the really lucky one that after all these 350 million, Spermatozoids are the one, basically the strongest. So you are the winner. Each of you is a winner. And that is what we are going to keep going doing. Right? So, okay, so that is about the OB. Uh, I just was a half machine, I would say, half engine, because I, I need to stop myself to talk more and more and more. So I just give you what you need for for this class and give you more uh, extra, and I hope that you like this uh, this part of the of the course. Be okay with that? Okay. All right. So any question about the lecture so far? From the first part, we was talking in the first part. We was talking about the DNA, right? And uh, the next two classes, we are going to keep talking about DNA. In the next classes, you will know why, uh, if, you, if your father is blonde and your mother is a brunette, uh, what is the chances to have your baby brunette or blonde, for example, right? So we will talk about that another time, in the next class. And in um, reproductive, male reproductive system and female reproductive system, basically in male, what we're talking about are going to be BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy. And in female, there is much more to talk about that because we have infections, we have ectopic pregnancies. So the anatomy of the, of the female reproductive system is very, very, very important. And I actually, I will suggest you to see, I going, I, well, I didn't suggest a class in the morning, uh, but uh, you can uh, Google the sperm race, sperm race, the sperm race, okay? The sperm race, they have 10 chapters, 10 minutes each of them. And uh, it's not my fault if you get stuck on that, okay? It's not my fault if you become addictive to that video, okay? So probably if I have time, I will show you a little bit a tale about that, okay? All right, so let's do the math. The math, the math is uh, very important in the way that uh, I want to tell you something here. Please, listen to this very carefully. I don't really much care about that you had the right answer. I don't. Why? Because I want to listen to this very well. Because what I want is just to get to learn the process, how to get to the answer. For example, if I tell you, a simple example, a demonstration, I'm going to prove it, the, what I'm saying. 
if you eat one candy in one hour, how many candies you eat in three hours? Three. 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 So you don't need, you don't have to think too much about that. But what about if I tell you, do it as math calculation? A simple thing. Can we do that? Mm -hmm. Right? And that is what I mean. I don't care about really the answer, the right answer. I want how to you to get to the to learn the process to get to the answer. Okay, and that is metronomy. And that's what we are going to do right now. Okay? All right, so let's get ready. For that, I'm going to give you one example here. This is my review. A patient is receiving a tube feeding formula. A tube feeding is an NG tube. It's a nasogastric tube. It's a tube that you put in the nose and go all the way to the esophagus. And you will learn how to put it. And I can teach you anytime when, if we have a space of time in the school. Okay, call JVT. JVT is just a name, so forget about that. Distractor or decoration, whatever you want. Which is infuse. Infuse means to put it through the uh, NG tube towards the stomach. Where is NG tube? NG tube means nasogastric. So it's a tube that is going from the nose and going to the stomach. So you put fluid through this tube that getting into the nose, you don't put it in the nose, no. It's the, in the tube that is in the nose, the tube go all the way down to the esophagus and then to the stomach. All right, a patient is receiving a tube feeding formula called JVT which is infused at a rate rate of 65 cc per hour. 65 cc per hour. CC, one cc is equal to say one ml, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Don't yes. no, forget that, please, okay? One ml is the same one cc, it's the same thing. All right, so if you are giving this volume in one hour, what is the total volume of the formula that will be infused in a day? Means in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now, I'm going to give you the example I was giving you about the candies. The candies, we are going to use this format. The format that we are going to do is called the proportions. Are going to be like this. That is the format. That is the structure. Okay, we are going to put numbers here and there. All right, so now, here we have, if I tell you, if I eat one candy in, okay, I'm going to put here, different, to make it easy. I eat two candies in one hour. How many candies I will eat in three hours. The answer everybody can tell me is? Six. 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 Right? six. So now, how we can six. turn this in proportions? Talk, doing in proportions, you're going to do this. If I eat, look at this. One hour, one hour equals. Sorry? If I eat two candies in one hour, mm -hmm. How many candies? Where is candies here? Candies. How many candies are going to eat in three hours? Then you need to do the multiplication, the cross, right? Multiplication. So this that is dividing, always they pass to the other side on the opposite, on the top. Is this low? Down is they go up. But if this is dividing, are going to multiply. So we have two candies times this jump here, three hours, divided by one hour, equal x. Mm -hmm. Then I divide hour and hour, they go away, mm -hmm. and three times two, six candies. Six over one is one, six. Okay, excellent, very good. So now, I want, please, this is the first time I'm going to tell you and I don't want you to overlook this because this is going to save you to pass metrology and to save you to not make mistakes. 
So every single number you're going to write down, you're going to write, oh, can you give me five minutes, please? It's nine o'clock. Can we? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Everybody's here? Yes. yes. So every number that you give me should be having a unit. A unit. The unit is what is making valuable the number. You want the proof? I want to prove you. Nikki, you have a you have a dog? A cat? Yeah, I have a dog. A dog, okay. Tell me, tell me the number of the number of years that have your dog. The number of the number. He, huh? Like how old he is? Yeah. Give He's me the four. number. Of, give me the number. Only the number. Four. Four. All right. Four is the number. But we don't know what is the real age of that of, of her dog. Why? Because it could be for what? For hours? For days? For weeks? Four years. For months? Four years? Right? And that makes a difference. So now the number makes sense if you make the unit. Okay with that? So mm -hmm. never, yeah. ever try to do superpowers or super mind because you will forget you i can guarantee that and the only way not to do is to create discipline on that put and write down the units the, without the units the the number doesn't have any value you okay with that mm -hmm. all right okay. so next here we are going to see I can erase this. No. All right. So we are, or let's do this this same group here. Look at this. The format are going to include it. Look at this. If you have unit here, I'm going to put like a dot. That same unit should be here on this level. Yeah. Okay. The unit, the same unit. The number can be different, but the unit should be the same on the same side. And if you have a unit here, like you're going to put it like this, this same unit should be here. You okay with that? That's why I put, if I eat two candies in one hour, how many candies are I going to eat in three hours? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So that is the way that you need to do it. If you don't do that way, you're going to mix it and it's going to be totally nonsense results. You okay with that? Yes. All right. Yeah. So now let's go to the, to the question. Now it's going to be easy. <laughs> so the data is going to be this important. If I have 65 cc in one hour, how many CC, CC here, right? But I don't use CC because it's the incognito, in that is the, the one I want to find, are going to be in one day. Well, it's 24 hours, well, one day we'll spoil 24 hours. 24 hours, yeah. And now what is going to do? 65 CC times 24 hours divided by one hour. One hour. X. Mm. One hour and one hour, goodbye. And you multiply this, and that is your answer. Answer, yeah. Easy or not? Yes. Yeah. So see, I didn't even to write down the the answer because what I want from this is you to learn the process. Homework, Nikki. You're you're going to be the star. Next week is going to be all, all, all the person star. unless you keep want to keep want to be the star. Okay. Okay, Nikki. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, please. All right, so I want just you to do these exercises. Use your imagination. Please, if you spend at least 15 minutes, 20 minutes to create your own exercises in the way I was teaching you, I guarantee that you will not have suffering any of the coming of the coming lectures of metrology. Okay. So, for example, you can make a sample. If I study three pages in a day, 
How many pages are you going to study in a week? I mean, seven days. Okay, Miss Rachel, okay. All right, so now that is one example. So, for example, if you, I have uh, two vacations in a year, how many vacations I will have in 15 years? No example. 30. Exactly, but in put it in the math format and think about it. Stay, don't don't get the result. Try to find out how you are doing that. You know why? Because it's like a, riding a bike. At the, at the beginning, you need to think about I need my right leg, my left foot, my head, my everything. But there's a moment that you can ride without thinking, right? And that is the feeling that you're going to have if you know and learn the process. You okay with that? If you are walking 30 steps in 10 minutes, how many steps are you going to walk in three hours? Okay? And guess, guess what? When you are doing, you cannot make minutes and hours. You need to make that conversion. You need to, if you put minutes, the other one should be minutes. If you put hours, should be hours. But actually, both are time, but there is different units. So they said, if you say minutes, minutes. Is there seconds, seconds. Is there hours, hours. And you make that conversion. For example, I will say 65 cc in one hour, correct? And they tell me how many cc are in one day. I'm not going to put one day. I need to put hours. You got it? So, and that is how you're going to do it. Okay. I think that's all for today. Uh, Rachel, any comment, please? How was the class today? It was good. Um, as usual, I like the examples you used, um, especially when you were explaining the ovum. Um, and how you use the parking lot and cars parked in the parking lot. So that was interesting. And, okay. um, Excellent. Yeah. Ms. Rina, please, anything to improve or remark or make it better? Um, I think it's good, Doc. Like, <laughs> like um, previous uh, like classes, learn uh, new things. Okay, can you be missing one lecture? You're missing, if we're missing a lecture, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So just be careful with that and uh, just try to attend all the classes or at least hear all the, the recordings. Thank you so much, Ms. Rina. I appreciate your, your time, your effort. Ms. Karina, please. Um, just the same as them, Doc, uh, but the little sneak peek for the math sections, um, it actually helps just because sometimes we had to skip it because there's a lot of information for the um, science. But um, yeah, today I like it. To, it's it's really helpful that you got you had to go through with the math as well. So thank you for that. Yeah, I wish I could have eight hours seriously to talk about everything, but uh, it's actually only four hours. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's why participation is important because that guides me. What is your interest? All right, so just remember, as I told you at the beginning, the class is just not me. The class is each of you. All right? So please, uh, miss the star, please. I, I, if you will be in class, I put you a star in your hand. Like I have a small star and put it there. OK, Mr. Star, Mrs. Star, Miss Nikki. OK, uh -huh. tell us. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was uh, good. Um, I also agree with um, Karina too with um, like the like just a quick Greek like summary of what the um, the map portion would be because sometimes I do get stuck on that part. But um, yeah, thanks okay. for letting me be the star. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So I will ask you next class, okay? Because actually you did a good job today. Thank you so much, Miss Nikki. Thank you. Thanks. Ms. Julia, please, your comment. Anything to improve, anything to get better or something, please? Um, I like when you go over the practice questions. 
Um, because then um, I do sometimes get stuck on the math problems. So, um, yeah, it's nice. Okay, so the the practice questions they have, uh, I put animation, so you can click and you can see the jumping out of the answer, right? So the, you, that you can be used to as a tool to to refresh and to reinforce. Thank you so much, Mr. Tom, please. Um, as always, it's actually really nice. Um, this class. Um, with your drawings and everything is actually very helpful. So I just, I like your lecture. Thank you, Mr. Tom. So if there is anything to prove, let me know, please. Uh, Miss Monica, please. Um, no, I liked um, that you went over a couple math math uh, questions. It gave me some kind of um, example to go back to. And um, just the recap, I think that was helpful at the end. Um, just how you went from stage one, number one, two, three, going down. So, um, no, everything was fine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Monica. Thank you. Ms. Daniela, please. Ms. Daniela, um, where are you? Right here. I'm awake. Yeah. Um, the same as, you know, all my uh, fellow classmates. Uh, I, I like the recap. I like to be able to um, now put it together we had little bits of information and being able to put it all together, it's nice. Okay, thank you. Ms. Teresa, please. Um, I really liked um, tonight how you've really added a lot of layers of knowledge onto things I've already, I've already known about. Um, so that really like makes it stick into my head better. Excellent, thank you, Ms. Teresa. I appreciate your effort and all your time. Ms. Cat, please. Um, yeah, I agree with Teresa. Um, it's just everything's like adding up and it's just all starting to make sense. Um, I do appreciate you taking the time to go over the genes with us and kind of like reiterating it, making sure that we all understood. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kat. Okay, thank you for all the group. Um, yeah. So I will see you Wednesday, uh, usual time. If there's any questions about that, uh, our tutoring time, Super Sunday, will be for next class. But if you require, if you need something, we can do Super Tuesday by tomorrow. But if this, let's see how everybody's increasing their grades, by the way. And uh, this is very good and very encouraging. And uh, not because I make it easy, the exams, it's because you see, you look the exams in a more easy way because you are gaining that level. You are learning, you are actually, uh, uh, you are basically adapting to the situation. And that is what I call a systematic progressive learning and uh, process. So that is increasing, increasing. Okay. Well, I go into uh, just thank you so much for coming. I go into just show a video that I was telling you about the sperm race, and I'm going to show you probably two three minutes about that, and you will decide if you like it or not. Okay, all right. So for now, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you next next time. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Good night. All right. So let's see. Spam race. It's not my fault if you are going to stay until three o'clock in the morning. Huh? Yeah, I'll just stay up and go to work. Oh, you you saw it, uh, Mr. Tom? No, not yet. All right. So this is actually. A, okay, I will tell you. This is. A, oh, okay. This is the, this is what? This is the, uh, the spermatozoid on the size of a human being. And whatever it happened is according to the size of the human being. But I will show you that right now. Let me cut the recording.